Hey, you never had a big enough weapon. Hey, motherfucker, never learn your lesson. Right. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Boo. I'm an 88 pack nigga. Uh, 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 I mean, they uh, uh, woke up, drink blood, fangs out. Full moon, motherfucker, change like a hoe. I'm just a nigga from the hood trying to stack a little cheddar for the money. Yeah, man. Drew Titan Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. What's good, y'all? Batman in the building. Stormy B, man. What's good, brothers? Oh man, what's good? Glad to be here. All right, all right, all right. I think Batman stepped off. There you go. Batman, what's good? What's up? What's up, y'all? What's good? What's good? Uh, we waiting on the guests to come in. The links went out. They'll be here promptly. Mr. Paz, Dwayne Jones, Robert Sportsman Lee, Black Alpha, Thrill Hill, King Jr., Main Event Mark, Dre Finest, Sheldon Holmes. Bruce Goes, the OG salute, trick boxing. Man, this thing jumped on me crazy. Stephen Young. Uh, Kenny, what up? Yeah, family spilling into the building, man. All right, so um, while we waiting for the guests, let's, um, I would say this is an elephant in the room, but I already did a video about it earlier today. I'm still annoyed, and I got some more tomorrow that I'm going to spill. But um, we can go ahead and talk about it until the guests get here. Um, last night, about last night, man, uh, you know what? I already did my video. I I'll talk about it. But you know what? Let's, um, I'm going to throw it over to you, Stormy. Uh, what's, your, what's your take? on it last night she called stevenson oh man i felt like it was a uh a dominant performance by shakur uh he won every round got a couple of knockdowns and uh come out of the fight unscathed now to the 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 observer that want to see you know more aggression more punches uh thrown i'm i'm in a, agreement with that but i don't hold it to him for this fight because this particular fight everything he did was enough now he could have did more and people may have wanted to see him do more uh i would like to see him do more in the future i don't want to see him uh settle in and just be a pot shotting guy you know you pot shot you can hit the guy clean you waiting for those clean shots you do that there were moments when he could have followed up and uh this was one of those fights where i said in my pre-fight video i said that this was the type of fight that he needed right now and it turned out to be exactly that he had a guy in there that had a bomb threat and he diffused the bomb threat in the first round. I don't know if a lot of people noticed that or not, but there was an early exchange where he hit Nakatima uh, very cleanly, and it made the guy pause and say, oh, th this guy got a little more than I thought he had. And what happened was he was just looking for the perfect shot from thereafter, and in between – Shakur, who is very intelligent, I talk about his intelligence a lot because he's one of the few fighters that you could see thinking while he's working and in, a, in the midst of a match. And he figured out as long as I could get to this guy with certain angles and get my shot off and get away and get out without and come out clean, as they say, or swim without getting wet, as they like to say now, he's comfortable with that. But I also put that on the corner because they should have been able to recognize where he was after about five rounds. 
the separation in talent was very obvious and i felt like they could have encouraged him to do more things now if they have not worked on those things in the gym shame on them but i am of a firm belief that with all the experience that's around him in camps and stuff like that and who rolls with him and everything i i, I can't i can't give them a break on that they should have pushed him in a direction to throw more shots not just to be singularity with shots is sticking and getting out stick he should have been throwing sets of combinations and the more he would have let his hands go against jeremiah the more that jeremiah would have broken mentally because he he wasn't look at it like this about, about rounds rounds 10 and 11 his corner was telling him he needed a knockout but he never sold out to try to get that knockout did he even though he has that big right hand or somewhat of a right hand uh you have to question the guys do who he knocked out but it was enough to make Shakur be defensive as well and mindful of that. But there were still things they could have coached him through at that. But I, I liken it to what Georgie Benton used to like to say. He said, win this one and look good next time, you know? That's so, right. and, and that was one of those things. So I don't, I don't come down on Shakur. We got to We got to echo. I, I don't come down on Shakur, but I do look for more from him in his next outings you you you, you give him a pass because he, he he won every round he 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 won hands down he 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 uh how they say he he uh closed this guy out you know as far as he, he didn't let him in the fight but now it's time to take it to the next level and i know he has that we know he has next level uh ability but it's got to be brought out and all the time, you don't need the opponent to bring it out. A fighter needs to be able to assess these things. I also didn't like the fact that he went public to the media to apologize for his performance because I don't think that he needed to apologize for being a winner. Never apologize for being a winner. You are a winner. You've been a winner. You're a medalist. Hey, you go out there and you do your thing. But you look to build upon everything that you do by taking each experience and adding that to your toolbox and going out there and showing some new wrinkles in your next outing. One of the new wrinkles should be in his next outing is to let his hands go a lot more. He doesn't have to do it from the first round, but as the rounds progress, he has to know you build the blocks toward stoppages and knockouts and pressure on your opponent. Time, time out, brother. One of our guests, our surprise guests just arrived. All right. Mr. Monty Barrett, what's good, brother? What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? How y'all doing? Hey, good, bro. Up, How are you? I'm doing well, What's man. good, man? You know, God is good, man. No doubt, no doubt, man. Um, Thank you for joining the panel. Man, what well, is the sun's out. Where you at, bro? I'm in South Carolina. My wife and I, we just bought a house out here uh, three months ago. So you're just getting acclimated to this new, this new life, you know? Yeah, no doubt. I was about to say that I don't look like Queens, bro. Nah, nah. I gave you a press, man. I, I, I did. Well, I didn't live in Queens after after I got divorced in 2003. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I stayed with Zab for a couple of weeks in uh, mm -hmm. New Jersey. And his wife was doing some real estate. So I wound up just, you know, just playing my, my, my hills into New Jersey. And I stayed there for like uh, until, until I left here, until I came here, which is... Uh, wow. 2003 to 2020 21 so jersey wow. is my but you know jersey is right where we were we like five minutes five ten minutes from the city you know what i'm saying right over the, the lincoln tunnel or the judge washington that's what's up look all the stars showing in it they're showing up at the same time poison yeah. junior jones in the building what's good bro Yo, that's that's my cousin man we junior right there Yo, what up cuz what's going on man oh, my wow <laughs> I, I'm I'm in, I'm in awe right now. I'm in awe. So so Monty just popped. We're waiting on one more. We're waiting on one more. But for those of you that don't know, all right, Monty, tell the tell the people who you are, and let them know. Well, listen, I'm Monty Two Guns Barry, bro. I mean, I, I've been I've been around. I've been around. I've uh, been there, done that. You know, I'm grateful for all my uh, faculties to be in place at this point in time. You know. You know, this is a hard sport we're in, but, you know, I fought the who's who of boxing, you know, won a couple of titles, but didn't win a world title. 
fought for the world title twice, you know. But I've been there for everybody. Definitely, man. Junior Jones, man. For those of you that have been living on the moon, yeah, this is Junior champ. Jones, man. Junior, remind everyone who you are, brother. I'm Junior Jones. I'm a five-time world champion. I'm the New York New Jersey Hall of Famer. And uh, so I can really say, I'm a five-time champion, three different divisions. He's not just Junior Jones. He is the man. He paid, yo, he whipped Barrera ass. Bro. Jones I remember man. that. I love, I love you, cuz. I remember goes. that, man. That 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 Barrera fight, man. I remember screaming in my living room. Oh, oh! I remember that. I remember yeah. that, man. That was crazy. Yeah, was you, crazy you, 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 you were the underdog in that fight. Yeah, I was uh, tiny the money. <laughs> yeah, man, you, you sure did, man. The Barrera Conqueror. That's that's what they call. It. They calling you that in the chat right now. The, the Barrera Conqueror. I fought, fought, I fought, hey, uh, hey Junior, you should you should have become a trainer, bro. Because after you whooped Barrera, he changed his whole boxing <laughs> style. <laughs> uh, no. You're right, Sure Joe. day, sure <laughs> day. <laughs> sure day, man. Um, um, so basically, we, yeah, we're just gonna pick your brain a little bit about um the industry. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Batman. Go ahead. Go nah, ahead I'm, I'm telling you, I'll be right back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, we're going to pick your brain about the industry, um, what you love about the sport, what you hate about the sport. There's no filter here. There's no filter here, man. You can let it all out, man. You can let it all out, man. Um, the, the platform is definitely yours. So um, I'm going to go around first. Monty. What up? I'm going to jump around a bit. All right, Monty. Look. I was in the house when you, uh, where was it when you fought Nikolai Valuev? It was in, that was in Rosemont, right? Chicago. It was in Chicago. Yeah. Bro, how could I forget that? Because I, I was there. Right. Yo, listen. You know what I said after that fight? What's up? That Russian looks big and scary, but he can't bust a grape. But you know what happened? The funny thing is I got a lot of accolades from that show from that loss, believe it or not. A lot of people don't even understand. When we fought, before the fight, I, I've been training in an 18, 20 foot ring. So when we got there, Don King flipped the script. He wanted Nicolo value up to have a be have the image of bigger than life. You know, so what he did was he cut the ring, he cut the ring to 14, 14 and three quarters. 14 and three quarters is the regulation for the W for the WBA. So him cutting the ring in 14 and three quarters, my trainer, Ali Bashir, looked at me and said, bro, that's all the game plan out the window. You got to go and fight this guy. There's no way to, there's no way to move. You know what I'm saying? There's nowhere to move. So basically, he was down. He's, as soon as he stepped out of this corner, he was in my face. So I had to fight. I mean, I, I caught him with a couple good shots, but I had, a, I had a concussion after, I think, the fifth round or something. I didn't even realize it. But I fought him for guts. Was he was he as strong as you figured? No, he wasn't strong. It was just he was a big guy, and he yeah. was punching down. I had a concussion. I had like eight knots on my head because me being shorter than him, him being seven two, he was punching down. So, but you know, I mean, the the, the one of the strongest guys I've ever fought in boxing. I don't know if you ever re, if you remember him. He was a small heavyweight. His name was Eric Kirkland. Yes, Eric oh. Kirkland hit like a mule. He hit me in the first round. I wanted to quit. I was off for two years, but the first time the guy hit me, I was like, "Damn!" I said, "I ain't know if I sign up for this." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so somebody to take you into tomorrow. I feel like, "Damn, this little this little fiery ass guy." And I I was trying to lay down to be honest with you, but he kept hitting me so hard. He made me fight. I wound up stopping him in the tenth round on ESPN, and that set up the fight with Joe Messi and Dominic Gwynn and Owen Beck. And I fought three undefeated fighters back to back to back. Joe Messi, if there's ever a term hype job manifesting into a person, it was Joe Messi. <laughs> exactly. And, and I don't and, and I don't I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but I just saw what HBO was trying to do with that guy. And they picked the wrong guy to try and get behind because I was not impressed. No, with, no, with Joe Messi. he could fight. I mean, I I, I had boxed with him a little bit in um, amateurs uh in Colorado. He was a he was a decent fighter, but they was trying to make him to be the next Rocky Marciano because he's Italian and, and the whole nine. Yeah. But 
he wasn't really that good. You know what I'm saying? He he wasn't he just had base good basic fundamentals, he did, but he wasn't no Rocky Marciano. And you know, but this 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 world of boxing, we always are looking for a white great the, the great white height, you know. That's what it was. That's what it was. That's Trick right. Nolte in the building. What's good? What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Junior Jones, Monty Barrett. Man, I'm in awe. I've been trying to get y'all, man. I got y'all. Hey, it's, it's great to see y'all, man. I'm ready to talk some boxing. Junior Jones, man, you had a great career. Monty Barrett, you had a great yeah, career, man. I'm doing something you, on y'all. I'm doing something on for y'all on my Instagram page, man. I'm doing like a yeah. Um, like a like a short bio on y'all, man. Excellent, man. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. My cousin is graduated. Say what's up to my cousin. Hey. Yo, what up? What up? What up? Yeah. Yo, he, he just right. graduated. We had a little party for him out here in uh, South Carolina. Yeah. We graduated with high school. Yes, sir. High school. All right, you you going to college? No, I'm going to Wingate play football. Uh, what's your position? Oh, uh, running back, RB. Oh, you're a running back. Yes, sir. Oh, I was an outside linebacker in high school. No, nah, you can't catch me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I don't, if I don't catch you in 32 steps, then you get away. Nah, no steps. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Congratulations to the young king. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, man. You're doing big things. Yeah, no doubt, Stormy. You got questions yes, for, the, for for Monty? You got questions for Monty? Yeah. One one question I have for Monty, man. What was up with that debacle with uh Chris Cow uh 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 Kowser? Um oh, he got Kowser. you and then you came right so, back so, and got have, him. Check what? this out. You know, um so Cliff <laughs> Kowser, that was on I think July 7th in um Connecticut, and I broke my hand. Me and my, my wife at the time had an argument. I punched the cabin and broke my hand. Right? Oh, so man. I, didn't, I, didn't, oh. I only got 7500 for Cliff Kowza, but I was getting out of my contract with Don King. So I had worked it out. I was getting out of my contract. All I had to, I, all I had to do was complete this last fight. I was counting my chickens, you know what I'm saying? And I, was, yeah, yeah. I, I fell because what happened was when I got there, I overlooked Cliff Kowza. I'm thinking about the next fight, the next payday, and boom, he stopped me. But then nobody wanted to F with me at that point. So uh, HBO said they told um, they told Lou if we're gonna do anything with Monte, he got to redeem himself. So I got with Greg Leon from Boxing Talk, and boom, Greg got me Cliff Cowser right back. So I was like, boom, this is redemption. So I got in the best shape of my life. I was 213 pounds. That was the the, the weight I had for my very first professional fight. Mm. And boom, I did my I had my business, and then I got a chance to fight, you know, Todd Fields, David Hay, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. How was David Hay? Yeah, David I thought that that was just a weird stretch for you right there with those two no, bouts. No, no. I'm like, what happened here? You know? I had a great camp for David Hay. What, they ha what happened with David Hay, he got in my head, and he beat me before the fight. Was he I mean, strong, David Hay? He beat me before the fight, so he manipulated me. He was very, very clever. He's one of the most intelligent fighters of all time when it comes to my career. What he did was everything that I had signed for in the contract, First class, uh, uh, up there, this and the other. He got me in business class. That wasn't bad. When I got to the airport in London, I had to wait. I had to wait three hours, and then I had to take um, a, a pay for my own cab. That was four hundred dollars. Then at that point, uh, when we got to the hotel, instead of us being at the Crown Plaza, we was at the Days End, <laughs> where the fans was. Yo, I was in the small room with Jimmy Glenn. God bless, bless the dead. We was in the small room. It was like probably. 10 foot long, like a cell. You know, those rooms are very small and um in London. And so then he had me, he had me, I had to, I couldn't even train. I had to pay for my own trainer, my own uh, way to get there. It was it was crazy, but he manipulated me so good. He had me as so angry and so out of out of character that by the time I got to the fight, I had lost. Because I, mm. I was fast trying to get into the ring. Everything was just going wrong because I was emotional. And Mike Tyson said, the day that you fight on emotions, you lose. You know why? And this is what he told yeah, me. Sure. He, said, he said, try arguing with your wife and go to work or go to school. It doesn't happen. It doesn't work. So right. I was emotional. I thought I was going to 
you know, and if I was, if all of that didn't happen, and I was, and I was in the, in the right frame of mind, I would have beat David Hay. I mean, he wasn't that, he wasn't, he wasn't that strong, but he was very cagey. He changed his heights a lot. You know, what I'm saying he was strong with both hands. He was, he, but he was a good guy. You know, I'm not gonna front. You know, listen, I gotta get props to props to do. He, he came out that night, he won. Yeah. But he was very smart as far as just uh, everything he did outside the ring. And the biggest thing, you know, they wrote a book about it. His his brother-in-law opposes the trainer and was getting all the insides about what was going on with me. What? He was, he was he's right. It's a whole book about it. I mean, it's crazy. His brother-in-law posed as a as as a as a reporter and <sighs> Oh was, wow. Right. So this is how how nervous they were um, of you know, that was the first heavyweight fight. So his brother-in-law was, you know, coming to the room. He was, uh, he was speaking to me when I was in, in, in the, in the states. He was going all out to figure out what my game plan was, which it was like I got to fight. You know, what I'm saying I wasn't really saying anything that people don't know. But, you know, um, and then you know they counted the ref. The ref let him hit behind the head. He let David Hay get away with a lot of stuff. It was his promotion. I got paid decent. I got paid good money. I got paid like three fifty, four hundred, whatever it was. And Lou DeBella sold me under the bridge because he, because oh. I, I found out that Lou had took like fifteen thousand, fifteen to twenty thousand from me from the um Ty Phil's fight. Yeah, so he right. was uh he was he was in he was in Schitt's Creek. But you know that's just for the boxing and all the politics. You know sometimes it worked for you, and sometimes it worked against you. And that time it worked against me. There's that name, wow. man. That's not the first time I heard something crazy about Lou DeBella. Uh, salute to Taylor Bell in that super chat. He said, good evening, that Drew Titan panel everybody, in chat. Yeah, salute to you, fam. Everybody in boxing, every promoter in boxing is a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it's a good piece of shit and it's a bad piece of shit. Lou is the it's bad fact, guy. Sir. You know what I'm saying? Lou, Lou he, he and his divorce, he's selling with his wife of $40 million? Wait, 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 what? He he settled with his his ex wife for forty million dollars. You know how much money Lou got to have to settle with his wife for ex for forty million dollars? Not even go to court. He settled oh, with his wife. That just 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 sitting there for a minute. He settled with for forty million dollars. That's that's a lot of bread. He had a lot of bread, and he wasn't a bad guy. I mean, he was a passionate guy, but just like. <laughs> Promoters and and managers, everybody is in bed with one another, and they only looking out for themselves. So when it, when me and Junior Jones and other fighters retire, we're the only ones out of the job. The promoter still got his job. The the network still got their job, right? The manager he get his job. He got more fighters. The trainer got his job. He got more fighters. The only person who's out of the out of the game is the fighter. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's got so let, much. Let, let me let, let me say this. Let me say this, family. I'm talking to the chat now. Who fired Lou DeBella fairly recently? Was it not Deontay Wilder? Because he was acting out of pockets, trying to get that um hundred million dollar deal done with with, mm. with his own. He never, he never was with Deontay Wilder. Never with Lou DeBella. Deontay the uh, Lou Lou's with Al Heyman. So you can't, right. can't fire, he can't fire Lou DeBella. I think Al Heyman <clears throat> fired Lou DeBella. Yeah. Al Heyman and Lou DeBella had a falling out around something about Deontay Wilder. But that's what that that's what it was. He yeah. went and tried. To, he went and had a conversation with the zone. Right. And he tried that. I the way it looked like is that he was trying to undermine some authority. Right. Right. And then they let him go. Yeah. But I mean, listen. I mean, that's what I'm saying. The only thing, the boxing. This is not a business. What Jay Z said. I'm a businessman. I handle my business, man. You, this is a business, and you got to handle your business. But a lot of the fighters don't know. I was very fortunate enough to know a little bit about a little bit about business because I had my own business when I started fighting. I was a grown man when I turned pro. I was 25. I started boxing at 22. So when I turned pro, I knew a little bit about business. And then the, what I didn't know, I got schooled by people who was around me who showed me a lot about boxing, like Jimmy Glenn and other. People. But yeah. you know, it's all business. The the boxing world is all about business. It's not about talent. Talent takes you a long way if you got it. You can't hide it. But, but yeah, definitely. no doubt. Um, salute to uh, the brother Don Shada in that super chat. He said, Salute family and everyone on the panel. The best boxing show on Sunday. The intelligence, passion, quality, historical knowledge, and inside track is second to none. Thank you for always teaching me. Well, look, man, we teach, 
but I also learn, you see the panel, I also learn. And let me explain something to you. When y'all see guests on here, I'd say nine times out of 10, that's the brother Trick Nolte. You understand? We're, we're a well-oiled machine. So you see his cash app scrolling at the bottom, man. Do not be shy to hit that brother up because he's the one on the ground uh, uh, getting in touch with these legends. And uh, so we know how they're doing and we can reach out to them and um, bring us up to speed on things that we don't know about the sport because I don't know everything. I know some things on the outside, but at the end of the day, we're supporters. That's why I like talking to Monty and Junior and whoever else we had on, on the show because we don't know everything as supporters of the sport. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's interesting. You just said we've heard Lou DeBella's name brought up a few times. And here we have Monty pretty much saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, saying the same thing. This is crazy. So we're learning as we move forward. We're learning. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could tell you a couple stories about mm. everybody because, I mean, I've been. I've... Where we lost your audio, Monty. We lost your audio. Wait, you're muted. Hold on. Let me see something. Knock on the park. Oh, there you go. Okay. You know? But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a changing guard, believe it or not. It's a changing guard about, about money. You know what I mean? Just like it's, it's between the network and it's between the promoters and they give us little crumbs here and there. You know what I'm saying? Look at Don King. Don King is the master of manipulation and he's the master of boxing for many years. And Zab Judah is the only person to ever get out of contract with Don King because he knocked him out. He knocked him what? out in his office and Don said, Dina. he said, Dina, let that crazy nigga out the, out the contract. <laughs> wait a minute. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. my goodness, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Zab was released from his contract with Don King because he, he put hands on him. From Yep, he knocked him out in front of the office. And Don, and Don was was that before or after, after, after which Spinks. fight? After Sphinx. After Sphinx. After the Sphinx 2. Yep. Y'all heard it here first. I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Neither. Wow. Zab you. Oh, no. He could have killed him. Killed Ain't him? Down King like 104? <laughs> <laughs> now, back then, you talking about 15, 20 years ago. He was still young. Yeah, he was like he was like eighty four. <laughs> Don Don was oh, he came in boxing in his forties, so you know he been OG forever. <laughs> oh man, man, that's crazy. I, I oh man, that's crazy. Um, let me let me go over to Junior. Yeah, Junior yeah. Jones, Poison yeah. Junior Jones. Yeah. Let's just get to it, man. Let's get to it. I'm sure everyone knows who you are. You ain't got to go through all of that. Right. Take us through the Barrera fight, the first one. Well, the first, the first time Barrera, believe it or not, I was 101 underdogs to win that fight. And before the fight, I told the um, reporters, I said, this is a five-round fight. So they thought they thought I was, like, just losing my mind. Like, five rounds, you must be crazy. So we pulled in the poor Barrera. I knocked on the fifth round and said, "Well, and that 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 was that was all it took from there." You was a hundred to one underdog. Yeah, man. Like I said, I know. And the the crazy, the crazy thing was, Lula Bella, he was gonna stop me out. My man should have stopped that. You know what I mean? Man, did that name again, Lou Bella? Hmm. There, there's that name again. Yeah, but you yeah, know, but I'm not going to fall over because, first of all, and from all of a sudden, that's business for them. But Lou's not the only crook that's in boxing. You got so many of these promoters that killing these fighters. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but you just, you just don't hear, you don't hear of it. Because their job is to make money. So if you leave the door, but they can walk in and take that money, it's, it's going to be legal. It's legal bank robbery. Woo! Stormy, you, wow. you got a question for uh, Junior? Yeah, uh, it's kind of like a question for Junior personally and then his idea about what's happening presently. Uh, just last night, we saw Shakur Stevenson, you know, uh, 
I don't know if you watched the fight yourself. I know sometimes I you guys are not. I see. Okay. I see. Okay. And then uh, a week ago, we we saw a little over a week ago, we we saw uh, Devin Haney uh, yeah, against uh, Jorge Linares. Now Linares. you took on Orlando Canizales. Okay, Canizales was a, a a good champion and everything, good fighter, people, people and you were able like to best him. Yeah, you know, you were able to best him. Defenses. Huh? A lot of people forget that he has 17 defenses. Yeah, and that's where I'm going with my question for you personally and your assessment of the young guys today that are kind of in that position that you were when you took on Canizales. You, you were able to go out there, and that's when the light really shined bright for you because the Barrera fights came after that and everything. But yeah, exactly. he was a wily veteran, and you were able to go out there with your talent and, and best him. When you yeah, see these guys today more. take those chances, right, um, like Haney did against Linares, Shakur did to a lesser degree last night because, you know, uh, Nakatima wasn't necessarily on that type of level. But we do exactly. see big things in the future for uh, Shakur. What, what, is, yeah. what is it, according to your experience, what is it for the, the fighters of your ilk when you when you – Make that when you finally get that chance to step up and prove yourself and put yourself in a different position of consideration of where you are. How important is that? And what does it do for you as a fighter as far as elevating your confidence and everything? Now, uh, when you're in that position, first of all, when you get there, you, you have to shine because if you don't shine, it's a wrap. That's now I'm not becoming a pawn, they're not gonna think about it. So, in that position, you gotta shine, you put pressure on yourself because. You gotta shine. You have to put the pressure yourself because it brings out the best in you. And when you're in that position, you gotta, you gotta go out there and just think about what lose the draw. You just gotta go out there and give it up. Cause if you lose, you would expect to lose anyway. So you gotta go out there and just give it your best because if you, if you just did like with me, if I was 101 to lose my loss, he would have said it was good to crap. He was gonna lose anyway. So you go out there and you just gotta give it, give everything you got. Just Hey, you know, like to throw for the fences because you got nothing to lose. Absolutely. Great stuff, man. Yeah, salute to uh Mr. Mel Advice in the uh, super chat. Much love and appreciation to salute Drew 100. Peace out. What you gotta send to with boxing when um Paul's what they do, you can't get mad no walk his business. Their, their job is promoters, there's business. So my thing is that's when yourself, your manager will come very important to know how to neglect the business. Because my thing is when I fought Barrera being a 101 underdog and even HBO thought I was just going to come in because I mean, I believe it not as a point, I made $40,000 in that fight. So it was like, they thought there was going to be one good penny and just send me away because who going to be Barrera at the time? So the whole thing is just a point where, like I said, you ain't got to believe in yourself and just like I said, when you're in that position, Go for the fences, you know. I said, "Cause what, what you have to lose? You go out there, what you got nothing to lose? You, you wasn't supposed to win anyway, so gotta go out there and just give everything you got." Yeah, I hear that. Yep, for sure. Absolutely. So, so you guys said promoters, they the promoters, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't, these fighters, they don't care about us. Trust me. I mean, they, they play the love game when they with you, hug you, see you, pick you up, and say. How's your family? How's your mom? Kiss your mom. That shit is all fake. It's just business. My thing is, like I said, his job is to make as much money as he can, and your job is to take as much money as you can. You know, so crazy. Um, I when um when I was an amateur, I was about to. I just lost in the trials, and Zab, myself, and Gary Bell. I don't know if you guys remember Chico, Gary Bell. Gary Bell, Chico, so, that's my boy. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So what happened was, Shelly Finkel. I thought I was going to sign with Shelly because he's... Chico did. Wait, Monty, your audio. Wait, hold on. Monty's audio's bad. Can y'all hear him? Nah, not at all. Wait, hold on. Monty, your audio. I don't, I don't think, think you see. Me. That's funny. As soon as he said Shelly Finkel, the audio went back. <laughs> <laughs> they listening in, man. They listening. And he had 
and he had wait me. hold on monty you gotta go back a little bit monty because because your audio went out oh my audio went out. last thing we heard you say was shelly finkel all right so that did you hear anything about what i just said or no 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 last thing we heard you say okay. was shelly finkel okay so can you hear me now i can hear you now yeah. yes all right so shelly finkel all right i said i thought shelly finkel was going to be a real good friend of mine i said he sponsored me for my whole amateur career like half of my amateur career for a year and a half, he sponsored G G Gary Bell. You remember? Do you remember Gary Bell? Chico, he was Lennox Lewis and uh, Van der Holyfield, the main spawn partner. He fought everybody from David to uh, everybody. Oh my God, he's dropping names and the sound go out. I swear to God, <laughs> these guys are U YouTube moderators. Yeah, but but Gary Bell is my stable mate. Oh my God! What's going on with this audio? It's like a karate movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, put some man. yeah. So, so basically, I went to Shelly. I said, Shelly, so what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about me turning pro? He looked at me, and said, Hey, Monty. He said, You're a good guy, <laughs> mind you. <clears throat> He's telling me all these things. He calls me in the middle of the night, talk to me. You can do it, Monty. You're gonna be the best. <clears throat> he said. Monty, I just don't want to sign you. I was crushed. I'm a grown ass man. I'm 25 at that time, 26. I was like, yeah, what? He said, oh, you're not hungry enough. Can you imagine that? Yeah, he signed, he signed Gary Bell. Huh? Gary was in Kevin. Gary was in Kevin with Holyfield. Gary was in Kevin with Holyfield. I'm, can y'all hear me or am I, am I cutting in and out? No, you was cutting in and out for a second. Oh, but let me let me, take, let me take my earplugs out. Let me take my earplugs out. Okay. So if I heard him correct, I think right, you can hear me now, right? Yes, yes, loud and clear. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right, yeah. So basically, um, Shelly Finger told me. I wasn't going to be a good heavyweight. I didn't have what it takes. I, I'm not hungry enough. I live a good life already. At that time, I had two cars. I was making a lot of bread because I had my own business. I was a street nigga. Like, I was all into the streets as far as I had my own business, the, co the collision. I was getting people jobs. I had around four or 500 people jobs in what we were doing. So wow. that crushed mm. me. When he told me that, he crushed me. And um, when I fought Dominic Gwynn, I bust his ass. When I you did. Detroit, every, every time I fought somebody that Shelly Finkel represented, I bust their ass because I remember he took me, and I was a grown man, but he crushed my, my hopes of being a, a professional by telling me that I wasn't going to be, I wasn't good enough. You know what I'm saying? But he was my best friend, like Junior. Sound went out again. He had bootleg fire as hell. <laughs> I think you might be in a bad. He might be in a bad spot. Yeah, that's what I South, think it is too. He's saying South Carolina. Yeah, South Carolina is crazy. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm waiting for it to come up because he, he. I don't think he can hear me either. Uh, it's like a Chinese flick. Yo, Monty, we can't hear you. Can you hear us? I swear to God, every fighter he talking about worked for YouTube. Monty, can you hear us? You just see your mouth moving. We can't hear you. He's in a dead zone. That's what it is. Oh, shoot. Crap, I want to hear what he got to say. We're live, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, I can hear you now. Yeah, Monty, you cut uh, out like 30 seconds ago. Yeah, okay. All right. So, yeah, so that's it. I don't know. My phone is connected to my car. Even though I don't have to turn the plug the Bluetooth in, it automatically goes. So, okay. Is what it is. Yeah. Well, anyway, basically, what we got from you is um, Shelly Finkel broke your heart. Because he said you was living a good life. He already said basically you had enough money. You wasn't hungry enough. 
And yeah. you're looking at him like, yo, man, I thought we was cool. Yeah. Like Junior Jones you know, said. Tell, said, tell, said, tell, tell, tell coming, Gary Bell. Yeah, these, these guys come, they come in and they take, they, they win you in like, like you're their best friend. You know what I'm saying? And they kind of mm. said deception. So you kind of figure like, yo, I'm, I'm, you know, this is my guy. And, uh, I mean, like I said, he broke my heart, and but it kind of it kind of catapulted me to say, you know what? I believe in me. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. Right. I believe in me. I know what I got to do. And then I just put my big drawers on, and I find, you know, right. I found a way. No doubt, man. And you brought up the Dominic Gwynn fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, because he was the that next was crazy. Pretty bold. They had him as the next. A man you still attacked him as the next. Great heavyweight champion since Reddick Bow. That was big shoes to fill for Dominic Quinn. And it made yeah. me look like a hero. No, yeah, they, they was they had and they had they had high expectations for uh Dominic Gwynn. I mm -hmm. was sold. I'm not even gonna lie about that. I was sold, you know. Um, but two things happened that stick out in my mind. One of them was you. Um you just beat him. But I bottom line. Dominic, I boxed Dominic. Before that, we boxed in uh, Red Brick in New Jersey, and I knew that I was going to beat him because he wasn't. He was a very passive fighter. He was a counter puncher. He lay back. He fought on his back heel. A lot of things that I knew about him, I was like, oh, I could beat this guy. So when they offered me the fight, I was like, all right, boom. And that was a good two hundred thousand, and that was easy money. Yeah, they they um, he was definitely the underdog in that fight, and. I watched it and I was like, is this just Monty style or this dude don't want to fight today? It was crazy. Yeah. It's crazy because you would not pick to win that fight. Yeah. And the other thing that happened. Yeah. 7 1 and 0. That's right. And the okay. other thing that happened to Dominic Gwynn was a guy named James Tony. Yeah. <laughs> Should never did that. Yeah, I know. He never did that. Right after he went, my, my guy won 30000 on me on that fight. You know what I'm saying? He on a sneaker store in Atlanta City. He was like, yo, man, anything you want, man, come come here. I, I went there and got like four pair of Jordans. He was like, yo, man, I just won 30000 on you. You know what I'm saying? He said, I knew wow. he was going to do it, but yeah. But James Tony was like, was in a good fight for him, you know, coming off of me, off a of big loss like that. James is a good fight for nobody. No, no, James ain't. Yeah, James. James, 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 James is a very good fight. James fight. Yeah, he can. He's one of, I like, I like, he's one of my favorites. I like him. Yeah, James the fight. Yeah. I don't know about him playing Shannon Briggs now. I don't know about that fight to go. Nah, I don't know. I don't want, nah, you know what? I don't, I don't, they going at each other on social media. I don't want to see that. I think uh, James is in the space right now. He just needs to relax. You know what I mean? Um, James had a hell of a career, you know, um, but uh, he was one of the most fun fighters to watch. You want to talk about a natural talent? I don't even think he wanted to box growing up. He wanted to play football. He got his fundamentals are off the chain. But, yeah, you know, man. He's an emotional guy, though. So Shannon knows how to get under his skin. So that's why he's doing that. But James, James, James Shannon, had a, Shannon, Shannon will not beat James. Trust me. You James are, I don't know about that one. You know, Shannon, well, didn't, Shannon didn't really take no punishment. His whole career, he took he had three hard fights. George Foreman, uh, 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 Lennox Lewis, Vitaly Klitschko, and Lennox yeah, Lewis. Those are only three hard fights he had. He has a lot of yeah, experience. James got a lot of experience. Of James the Darren Wilson the fight, too. Remember the Darren Wilson fight? But he didn't take a lot of punishment, though. You know, when I say take a lot of punishment, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he took vicious oh. punishment with Vitaly. You know what I'm saying? Right. But he, he didn't really take a lot of punishment in, uh, in, in that fight. And George Foreman, even though he won, he lost that fight, but he took a lot of punishment in the Foreman fight. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But he really never. Shannon is so sharp as a fighter, like he's out of shape, of course, right now because he's getting so much money. But at the same time, you know, um, uh, I don't think I, I think Shannon. Could, if Shannon wanted to bounce back, he said he's fifty thousand years old. Like honestly, he can really he could really fight with some of these young guys because he don't have a like me. I had I had I had around ten hard fights. I made some of them hard. Right, I don't got no. I don't. I don't have it in me to want to fight. You got to have a. You got to have a different desire to want to. You know, like the good yeah, old definitely. Definitely. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I box. I box my clients in the gym. I work with people in the gym. Stay sharp in boxing, but I, I would never go back to the ring. Never. 
I was playing boxing easier to me now than before, believe it or not. But I will never fight again. Oh, yeah, of course. Every 10 years, it gets weaker. And yeah. it gets more in the money, but the money gets bigger. It's like the money, the, money, the money is better now, but I think today it's like you just said, I have a good mouthpiece that sells tickets. These guys do a lot of good talking, but they, they can mostly media, fight. And they got social media, Junior, so that helped. How different would the game be when you guys was in your prime if social media was around back then? Oh, forget about it. If social media was mm. if social media like it was like it was now, we'd be we saying I mean, it'd be crazy. So like I said, social media helped help these guys a lot. Well, social media wouldn't know what half these guys are. I think a lot of fights would have been made online before they actually went into the room to sign those papers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know yeah, but one man. thing I don't like about social media, and I'm Junior, I know Junior gonna say he agrees with me because he's old school, is that you're you're showing everything that you're learning and doing in your training camp on social media. Leave some of that. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, but I wouldn't do it. That's that stupid. That. I don't, listen, if I'm if I'm, if I was is if I was in this day and age, I'm not showing anything that I'm doing or working on on social media. Like leave that, leave that for your training camp. You know, the surprise of the element of surprise. Keep some things to yourself. Nobody don't got to see that you're right. working on your left hook and that you're doing this and you're doing that. Nobody, I don't, you know, and the man you stood, that's why I had so much respect for him. You never you're, 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 you're 100% right, though. You never certain things, though. You never certain things you certain things you shouldn't tell. You ne- right, right, exactly. Keep some of that, all that, or keep all that stuff. But you got to say, but mind, you got to say, the guys are thirsty for attention now. They don't yeah. care. They can sell their souls. Just, just get a little spotlight, but like I said, if you perform, do your thing, your spotlight going to come. Yep. Bad boys move in silence, man. You know what I'm saying? There's no loud gangsters. Yeah, you ain't lying. You ain't lying. These guys, these guys right now, they're hungry for these guys to talk a good game with their mouth. That brings the attention, which it does in a way. But my thing, today, boxing is all about talk. They, these guys, they talk a good game and nobody's much fighting. How they talk, I mean. But they're getting paid, though. That's the only thing. That's I mean, the, money, the, money, yeah, the money's greater because, because you got social media. So they there's, got there's social media. Got the, the world is evolved. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of networks, too. A lot of networks. Yeah. So that's why the money's greater. But the fighters are, I think the fighters are worse than the fighters before. Much worse. Uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, Let me ask you, Junior, knowing what you know now in your career, if you could like just hop in the time machine as far as business decisions, what would you change? Business-wise, I wouldn't change much because the manager I have is a great manager. So business-wise thing, my manager made this um, great business decision. And every business decision was, wasn't behind closed doors. I was always there for it. So it's not like he had to come tell me or call me and tell me everything. Business-wise, I was there. So business-wise, for at that time of box, I think he made some great decisions. So I wouldn't change my business decisions at all. All right. How about um did you um well it's kind of like a well let me ask, did you choose was there a point in your career where you were choosing who's who you was fighting or were you just you just nah, pick up I the phone? Not, but not because but you gotta say back then we couldn't do that. Back then, you know, the money wasn't like it is now you can you can choose. So back then was you had to take the best to get the want to make money. You gotta fight the best fight you can. You can't take that fight a guy who's a journeyman is supposed to make top dodge. So my thing like the Brown fight is a fight where I had no choice. It wasn't like I had a choice. I had to take. I had no choice. Wow, wow. So there was never a point where you say, you know what? Let me just go in this direction. This is worth a little more money. There was never anything wow. like like you was never in control of that. No, I mean, I was in control. I could have did that, but my thing is, like I said, I could I could have took maybe another five, six fights to equal one Barrera fight, which is taking a chance because this is boxing. No, that's a hundred percent. So my thing back then, if you don't fight the best, you ain't gonna get paid the best. So me, I, I took a chance to just who was out to want to be the best. I'm gonna fight uh, like Ken Gonzalez. It was a fight where I'm, I made it one at a time, but like I said. I didn't care because I knew to make money to get back on the scene. You gotta fight the best. Was there ever a point where um you had a good win, but it hurt you because nobody wanted to fight you after that win? Like, for example, like if you, you beat Barrera, 
that everyone look at you and say, okay, that's a great win, but you know what? I'm on the rise. I better avoid this guy. Did that ever happen? I mean, I mean, I was a breath fight, but I was a fight. When I first won the title, I won the title. I first won the, first won the title. But fight won the title at the Bantamweight. No one would fight me. I couldn't get a fight with no one. And then after the Barrera fight, before everybody was calling my name on the fight, on the fight, but then after that fight, no one would fight me. I, I was like stuck in water. I, I had to fight the best regardless. So there was fights I wanted to let marinate. I couldn't have to take them. Who ducked you? Let me see. At the time, Morales ducked me before, 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 before me and before he ducked me. Um, Jared, Jared Golza ducked me before the fight with McCullough ducked me, so that I had a lot of ducks. Wow. That's, but I lot of guys ducked because, because I bad away for Jim Fellay. I was pretty big for those divisions. Ooh. Rangy. Uh, and you had a uh, you had a question? Yeah. Who are we? Um, this for Monty. Yeah. Um, we had spoke before, I don't know if you remember, but um, I remember you had fought Luis Ortiz, man. Um, did you um suspect for him to did you expect him to be on um, PEDs when you fought him? Yeah, I did. But you know, listen, with all, all respect, I knew that's when I retired after that fight because I was in camp with I was in camp with uh Thomas Adamac and Travis uh Kaufman. Mm -hmm. And you know, we was having a good spot session, but they are not they're not Louis Ortiz. So basically I was pretty I was pretty good. And I took the fights on two weeks' notice. Um, at that time, I needed the bread because I lost. Uh, I had like I made I made some good good money with London with David Hay, but I you know the market crash, and when I, I usually invest my money in the market, it crashed. I needed the bread, so I took the you know I took the forty five, and you know I was like okay boom you know sometimes you got to make a sacrifice, and that was like my sacrifice, and it's yeah, like definitely. he has he has uh, a lot of things. Like he said, uh, he asked a question. And I was like, "Yeah, that's that's a good question." Because somebody had just asked me that question. They said, "What's some things that you regret in boxing?" So let me get, let me finish a little so tease. So I think he could have been, but I'm not sure. But regardless, the guy is like the guy is a is a phenomenal fighter because he's Cuban and he had had 400 fights as an amateur. Mm. One he won two Olympic medals, whatever, whatever. But I had some I had some regrets in boxing that a lot of people don't even know about the back door. The first one was Don King, and the second one was uh, Don King, and the third one was Dame, James Prince, and the other one was Leo Coburn and Russell Simmons. So let me start with Don King since we're talking about boxing. Don King came to me the Rockman fight and said to me, "Champ, you're gonna win this fight, right? We're not gonna worry about the purse bid because." Vitaly's coming out of out of <clears throat> retirement, and we're gonna bid high, and we're gonna get the bid, and we, we might have to act like you're getting two point five, but you might get just one point two. Are you okay with that? I said, no. Hmm. Let's talk about that when it happened. Okay, say no more. It was the Illuminati. <laughs> so then, yeah. so then he goes to Rockman. Now I didn't notice until afterwards. He gave Rockman. Rockman agreed to everything King said because Rockman is smart. Rockman knew King more than I did, and he and and uh, two or three weeks before the fight, King gave him three hundred fifty thousand. So now King got interest. So now Carl King is his manager. He got three hundred fifty thousand invested in Rockman. So Rockman got to win the fight, right? So boom, check this out. I'm on the phone. I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing an interview. Hold on. This is my wife. I'm doing an interview, mom. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so well, that's my wife. You know. Right. So long story short, so um, Rockman got three fifty from King. He won the fight. He he went he went bankruptcy. He filed bankruptcy and went and signed with Bob Arum and for James Tony. Second thing, uh, then James Prince came to me before the fight. He said, "Listen, he flew me out to uh, Texas. He was like, uh, yo, you shouldn't fight Rockman. Let me sign. I signed Rockman. I got Rockman out the deal." Let me get you out the deal, and you guys will fight the you you'll fight the, Rockman. You're number two in the WBC. Rockman is number one. He's gonna fight Vitaly. You fight the winner of that. You're gonna get two million dollars. And I was thirsty. I was like, well, 
You know, he's like, I'll give you, I'll, he said, I'll, I'll, I'll loan you 200000 against your purse. Mind you, I never took any advances towards anybody. Anything anybody ever gave me, it was for my talent. So I didn't do it. I was hard-headed. I didn't do it, and I regret that. I regret because James Tony, I mean, uh, um, James Prince was a master in business. And the third thing I regret is not signing with Def Jam. Leo Cole and Russell Simmons had Jay-Z, DMX, uh, Meth. Everybody should come to my fights in the beginning. Uh, Dame, everybody. And um, uh, Job Rule, they always should walk me out. You know, And we just friends, just kicking it. Boom, Leo bought me a Rolex. He bought me a Chapard. He gave me all, we was hitting the, 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 the modeling chicks. We was having so much fun. Me, Puff, all of us, everybody was having so much fun. And he was like, yo, he said, I want to sign you. But right, right now, Def Jam is in a lot of financial uh, uh, um, contracts. So what I'll do is I'll give you a record label. And I'm going to give you a manager, Joe DeGuardi, of 400000 He said, are you okay with that? I said, no. Yeah, he used to have the Billy come pick me up. Him and Russ, we used to hang out. Like, it was crazy. Boom. And if I would have just thought the bigger picture and not been thinking from a small mind about just boxing and think far further than boxing, I would have been the first athlete to sign the Def Jam. That would have been phenomenal. Because wow. Mike Tyson signed with them right after, right after me and that deal fell through. Mike Tyson, they snatched Mike Tyson up. I don't know if you guys remember that. But... Leo and I was real tight, you know what I'm saying? That's how I got to know Jay. I, I signed a Rockaway in 99 with them. I was the first athlete to sign to their company. When I fought Lance Whitaker, I had the Rockaway uh, clothes on. And I, I remember that. Back. Right. And I brought Zabin. But the point was that was something I regret because I was thinking from a different perspective. I was thinking more from a boxing situation approach more than a business approach. Imagine if I would have signed with, with Def Jam. You know how much love I would have got? Because everybody on Def Jam still making money. Everybody's still making money. Jay, look at Jay. Look at Dame. Everybody's still good. Look at D. Look at, you know, um, 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 Ja. Everybody, Er, all those guys, Bimmy, all of them used to come to my fights. It was all love. So those are the oh. things I regret. Oh, man. I rem I do remember you coming to the ring with Rockaway. Um, this just in. Wait, okay. He fell off. Um, Keith Holmes trying to get into the building. Keith, I, I think he, yeah, he he fell off. He's having a problem with his connection. Uh, He'll be here soon enough. Um, I let him in. I let him in. Um, he's like he's having a problem with his um connection. Um, wait, let's see. Keith, you there? I can hear you. I, I I'm here. Yeah. Um, I think you gotta hey, click the camera option. Turn the camera on. Man, I tried to do all that. You know, I've been, I've been hit a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, brother. It's nah. all right. It's all right, bro. I'm um, oh, wait. See, you keep falling off. What is going on today? Hey, Drew, let me let me get a question in for, um, hey, uh, what's, um, uh, um, I'm going to say, um, 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 uh, damn, uh, Junior, Junior Jones. Yeah. Um, I was in, uh, Marco's chat room the other night and I heard Kevin oh, Kelly saying that, uh, you had ducked him, man. I used to, yo. I don't mind, yo, why people believe that shit. I never done nobody. <laughs> I mean, Kevin, oh Kevin, man! I Kevin forgot. I'm not from Queens. I'm from Brooklyn. I'm not. I'm not gonna duck nobody. My thing. The worst you can do in a fight is lose. So why would I duck you? He get he get a twist because he get a twist because I don't like fighting southpaws. But you gotta remember, I never lost to a southpaw. I just like fighting them. And then he thinks I don't like fighting. But no, no one's ever brought that fight to my attention to say. You like to fight Kevin because they did. They might know out of four. I don't duck them out of four's Kevin. So mm -hmm. Kevin got, got that, 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 that dream and thing, and I ducked him. Plus, who's Kevin if they was a dangerous like that? Why would I duck him? Look, he see what happened. He fought Barrera, right? Wasn't even, wasn't even the contest. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's true. All right. And, Ju and Junior, man, how many Mexican fighters did you beat? Everybody keeps talking about Roger Mayweather, the Mexican assassin. How many Mexican fighters did you beat? 43. Y'all heard that, right? 43. Yeah, 40 and 42 and 1. There you go. <laughs> you know, I only lost the one. Doing? doing good, doing good. Doing Let's go, good. There you go. Man, Junior Jones ducked me, man. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah I, I just thought a rock abducted. <laughs> How y'all doing? Doing yeah, good, bro. Doing, doing good, good bro. man. That's good. That's good. We, 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 we just talking this boxing, man. Man, good to see you, brother. Really yeah, good to see here. you. Yes, sir. So um, you in the building, man. Um, let's just get to it. Let's get to it. Um, first of all, for those of you who've been living on the moon, please introduce yourself. Go ahead, Keith. Uh, Keith Holmes, two-time middleweight champion of the I world. I thought it was Katie Holmes. <laughs> hey, what up? What up? There you yes, go. Sir. There you go. All right, man. Let's just get to it, brother. Let's just get. We we we're already in the we're in the saucy part because there was a lot of gems that was dropped up here. So we just we're just gonna bring you up to speed right now. Okay. Um, first time I saw you live, you was here in New York. I live in the Bronx, and it was during that tournament. Yeah. You will be hot, William Joppy, Tito Trinidad. Now, next door at the theater, I was in attendance when you fought B Hop. Uh huh. Um, that was a dirty, grimy, gringy fight. I saw headbutts, elbows, low blows, and he did what he had to do to win. But That's what right. I recall saying, I said, either one of these guys can beat Tito. Yeah. And you, in yeah. particular, I said, Keith Holmes will, I believe, will put the jab in Tito's forehead, and that'll be a that'll be the fight right there. Yeah. Now, um, give me your assessment about Bernard Hopkins that night in that in the ring that night because I know what I saw. That was like I was like, ugh, that was like crazy. I think it was it was the it was the it was the same Bernard Hopkins. It wasn't the same Keith Holmes. Uh, okay. You know, so I can't take credit from him he was uh allowed to do what he what he's done for his whole career and he never got away from it and i give i give that to brilliance like if you're getting away with it why change it and he was you know he was getting away with it so but the fight two three days two days before the fight man dk got the got the arguing and bernard is the type of person that he gets up on seeing a person uh weakness like if he see you not focused that builds him up you know and uh when i look back we was in the auditorium looking checking the mic and stuff like that for the press conference and uh i look don king was talking about the money when i beat b hop the money was going to be this and that. i was like we already had a contract so i started you know started trying to get at him you know what I'm saying? And at the same time, when I look back, when they broke us up, I look back, Bernard was leaning up on the wall all the way in the back of the um, auditorium. So he had, got amped. But prior to the fight, uh, I had the worst training camp in my career. I usually go 100 rounds or more for sparring. For the Bernard Hawkins fight, we had 35 rounds of sparring. I was sparring southpaws uh, because we couldn't really find nobody to bring in, we brought in, I think, uh, Cunningham one time. He was, they got tall he is. So yeah. the camp fell apart. I let it fall apart like that. The prior fight to B Hop, I, I, I was over in England. I was over in England for a whole month, had over 100 rounds of spawn. That Keith Holmes, he wouldn't have beat. So that's what happened during that tournament. And then I was going through a lawsuit with DK going into the fight. And so it was a lot on me at that time. So, you know. But Bernard, he did what he was supposed to do. You know, I mean, that's it. Yeah, that was that was crazy. That was yeah. crazy. But I do recall saying, I said, you know what? Either one of these guys is gonna beat Tito. Because you yeah. understand, Tito, Tito was the was the he was put on such a pedestal back then. Yeah. And um, I don't know whether you when you fought B Hop, I don't know if the week before he fought Joppy or the week after. Um I know the fights were pretty close together. Yeah. And Tito knocked the crap out of Joppy. And yeah. we spoke to Joppy. When we spoke to Joppy last year, and Joppy yeah. said, yo, that guy, that guy's gloves were, were laced with something. Yeah. And yeah. that's not the first time I heard that. Uh, right. uh, Fernando Vargas said that. But this wasn't the internet ever back then. But right. I've been hearing things prior to that, like around that time that there was, he was doing some funny stuff with his gloves for a long time. But what I do recall... Was that um oh and brother Nas caught him when he went nah, to fight. Bernard B Hop caught him though. Yeah. 
yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. They caught him in the yeah. So that was they caught him in the act, yeah. yeah. But I thought that you had the you was rangy, and um, I thought you'd have stuck a jab in his chest and kept making him reset him because making him reset because um, Tito he would put all his weight on his front foot. Yeah, he do, and he was off balance a lot. He just had a very strong left hook. Yeah, and um, between you and Beehab, y'all had all the tools to beat the guy. Yeah, but that's just my assessment. You think you would have beat him? I, I know you. I know you're gonna tell me, yeah. But how would you have beat uh, Phyllis Trinidad? Uh, going in, if I would have went into the fight, if I if I would have won, beat Bernard Hopkins, right? It would have mm -hmm. been a, it would have been a bad story because I I didn't want to win that fight and go into that fight with Trinidad that way. Uh, you know, what uh, I'm saying? I think it's a learning experience. You know, what I mean, when I let my camp get away like that, never did that before. But in actuality, both of us with our P's and Q's, I believe I could beat uh, uh, Trinidad. He really didn't have a solid chin. He didn't. Uh, yeah, he was a monster, though. He was some a fighter that I really liked, but he didn't have a solid chin. Every time he would get knocked down, he would get up and he would get at his man real good. But yeah. other than that, you know, I don't think he had real... He, he, was, he would have been able to take mines if I would have, you know, been able to touch him in the right way. And then Bernard Hawkins did something in the fight that I was practicing for the Trinidad fight, and that was the hook uppercut. The when, hook. Bernard got, when Bernard had him in the clinch and hit him with the hook uppercut, right? that was their prime prime shot because that's how Trinidad leans in on that front leg. Yeah, yeah, that was that was bad, man. He was fooled, and uh, fortunately, you know, um, they, they already had him because at the Garden, you know, uh, the, the weekend they were supposed to have it, as you know, 9-11 happened. Yeah. Yeah. And they pushed that fight back, I think, two or three weeks, if I remember right. correctly. Right. right. And um, I remember looking up in the rafters. They had a big old banner that said, Roy Jones, you're next. And I looked at that and I said, Tito's not winning this fight. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. Yeah. yeah. He's not. And yeah. I told everyone that he's not getting out of this tournament. He's not going to win. This. I told people that. Yeah. And um whether B Hop or you went, I said Tito's not gonna beat those two guys fighting next door. He's not gonna beat those guys. The winner of those guys, he's not gonna beat them. I think I think uh, Bernard took the A out of him when he went to his country. He just started. Did, he Bernard was an, an expert at that. Just yeah, me. man. Bernard took me out of my game inside of the press. Uh, inside of uh, we was on the phone with the press, and he had the phone all the way across the room, and they were telling him to give me the phone. He was like, I ain't giving it to him. So I got up and. And try to take the phone from him, and he knew at that point he had. <laughs> wow! But the guy, I got you. Got to give Bernard credit for he wasn't a hell of a fighter. He just was a he. He was a strategic, a strategic guy. He just knew how to strategize the situation. Mike Tyson won the fight before he got in the ring, so Bernard was trying to do the same thing, right? In a different aspect, right? You know, yeah, you know, right, but. Yeah. You know, prior to that fight, I had a lot of good fights before that, man. And, you know, just to come up into that fight, I was blessed, you know, because uh, going into the Quincy Tell, I just got out. I was I was facing three life sentences. And Ooh. I had just beat that charge coming out. When OJ came out, I came I came out right before OJ came out. Ooh. And I, I was in, I was sitting in jail looking at magazines with me being number one. I was number one to fight Pernell. At 47, then I was number one to fight Terry Norris at 54. And uh, Pernell lost to uh, Chavez, and Terry Norris lost to uh, Julian Jackson, or yeah, Julian Jackson, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I was down in that way. They called me to fight Quincy at, I was like 54. I, had to, I put on three pounds, and I weighed at 57. So I went even ranked, and, and I was ranked number nine in the middle weight. You was facing three life sentences. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot to have on your head to be focused on boxing. But that was going on uh, prior to that. I won three United States titles, USBA. I won that three times in '94, and that's when they came and got me. My goodness! I don't, if, you man, see that, if you can pull up the Andrew Council fight in 1994, that's the fight where you can hear everything what they're talking about. Wow. Yeah. Goodness. And so going into that fight alone, it was a lot because I got a book coming out. It's called The Dark Path of the Dark Path of a Champion, right? 
That's not that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah, so going into the fight, I was we was at war in the city. Mm. Just when I was coming out of the streets, one of my buddies got killed. Mm. And oh. it actually it dragged me in like um organically because I had to pull in because um of you know what, what my status in that situation. Okay. Don't so say I, anything that gets you in trouble. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, nah, <laughs> nah, I can't <laughs> nah, I didn't do that. Yeah, but that's what you know. Going up into that that fight, bro, it was a lot on my, my shoulders. So, uh, the Trinity, the 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 fight that that uh, King gave me, it was a blessing. You know, it was a real good blessing. Yeah. Wow, incredible! Yeah, that's, that's huge. When is that book dropping? We 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 going into editing soon, so I can't really say when. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll let you know. I'll let my man know. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, man. We you know it'll be out soon. Yes, please. Stormy, you got some questions? Yeah, I wanted to uh, say a salute to Keith, uh, man. Uh, I admired the way you boxed, man. I thought that you were very technical and uh, you you put your punches together well. Um, I, I actually had it 50-50 going in with your match with uh, Bernard Hopkins because I, I, I knew how well you boxed. Yeah. And the only advantage he had that I thought was an advantage was he had fought a succession of softballs during the duration. So he was very familiar with that. Yeah. So, you know, you, you weren't going to be able to surprise him being right. a southpaw, but I really respect your, your boxing ability. I think that both you and Michael Nunn were two of the best southpaws of that era, you know, boxing wise. Yeah. But my, my, my question was going to be, um, when, when you guys were talking about Trinidad a moment ago, one of the things that people forget about Trinidad and you, if you would have faced him or, you know, we saw Bernard face him, Trinidad couldn't box. He, yeah. he couldn't box. He was yeah, always right. looking to try to knock somebody out. And uh -huh. when you got guys that fight like that, people like yourself, fighters like yourself, have an easier time because you can right. figure everything out that they're doing. You can see it in, in front of you. And mm -hmm. I was looking for a, a showdown between the two of you, actually, you and Trinidad, because I thought that you would be the type of guy that could stop him, you know, during that time as well. So um, uh, just salute to you and your contributions to the sport, man. You, you were one hell of a fighter out there. I appreciate so, um, it. Good to be able to talk to you as well. Yeah, so I appreciate it all. You know, I'm gonna tell you one of my uh, one of my favorite fighters, man. Like when they in the in the little weight class, and it was Jones, man. He was so long, his shoulders were so wide. I'm like, man, he's cheating. <laughs> he's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a he had a style about him that was so sleek, and I was like, look at this guy, man. He was just yeah, he was man. He was really good, man. Really yeah, good. Thanks, you know, he's man. like he's like a little bitty Tommy Hearns, right? right exactly. Yeah, he he was, 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 was my jab, bro. That was my jab. guys that beat me was guys who took away my jab, I'm pretty much done. Yeah, man. Right. Hey. Yeah, hey, I need my you, jab. You admitted it. Okay. That, the I have jab. You ducked it a few times. So I remember key number. You ducked me quite a few times. You ducked me a few times, number. I, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. <laughs> All right, that was a good dunk. <laughs> man, listen, jab. I'm a kid, man. I'm a king. He was a terrible fighter. Meantime, I watched him on Showtime. And he's a really great fighter. Great, great fighter. Yeah. You know, I, uh, the story is, you know, when I was with Don King, right, you know, I, I had three lawsuits with Don King. I beat him in all three, right, my whole career. Ooh, really? Then I goes up against Paul Vaden, right? Oh, Paul Vaden, yeah. Yeah. Come to find out, I wasn't supposed to win the fight. Cause it Don Don was so revengeful, right? Yeah, yeah. And and uh, Bobby Goodman told me in the dressing room. He said Don is pissed because I stopped him, right? Mm -hmm. And they said Don was pissed. I was like, why? You weren't supposed to win that fight, you know? And that's crazy, you know. That's crazy, right? But. That's how it was, man. Being, I don't know. I think a lot of them promoted the same way, though. They, they all, they all crooks. I mean, yeah, 
You know, they call him, come across like a nice guy, shake your hand, like your family. When it comes down to the end of the day, oh, it's all about that money, man. Money's the yeah. evil thing, man. Exactly. Exactly. Man, that, that's, that's evil. Sidebar, gentlemen. The brother CB Sports TV has a new family member that just was brought into the world. Well, so everyone... Applauds, applause to this brother right here. Special addition to his family. Uh, I think uh, his wife gave birth uh, when? Yesterday? Or this morning? Sometime, either today or yesterday. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, so salute to the brother. Yeah, the greatest CB. Yeah, I got yeah. no career too. Yeah, I got no career too. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 you know so, what so, my career is? I'm a stripper. Who's that? Yo, what? I'm a stripper, <laughs> I'm a stripper now. Hey, Word. they work. They getting their money. They yeah, getting their money. They call me coffee cakes. <laughs> coffee. Ca <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said. He said three fifty nine this morning. Drew, yep. Yeah. Got a wow. got a bouncing baby girl. Bless. Got about. You got to got to protect the sister. That's right. So y'all yeah, make yeah. sure. Yeah, the family take take care of CB Sports. There it is in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Salute to my brother Keon, yeah. man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, <laughs> Julia say he's stripping now. Kobe case, <laughs> <laughs> man. Listen, um, I want to ask you guys, I'm gonna start with you, Junior. Um, boxing today, uh, do you like what you see? Nah, I think boxing is watered down today. Like I can tell you guys before, my thing is if too much talking, let's fight. I think the money is great, and I have no question about it, but. I think these guys today, I think most of them suck. All they do is talk a good game, and that's it. You know what I mean? But as far as the game going south, it's, it's not the same. I mean, it'll get back to eventually, but right now, like, the game is really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Keith, same question to you. Uh, my, my only hiccups about the game today is that I think the younger generation should take a page out of our generation or the generation before us, like the Ray Leonard ones, all of those cell phones and social media things, like I was in the gym a couple of times and I seen dudes take their gloves off from hitting a heavy bag to go look at their phone. Mm. And it's nowhere. Oh, what? Could, yeah. <laughs> that's what's going on. Yeah, man, they, they, they don't take boxes serious. Nah. Nah, so, so this is what... Nah, this their is phones what I, more important, though. Look, look at the era I came up under. Uh, when we got in the gym... A lot of times we didn't we didn't have no cell phones, but you had to leave it in the car. And then exactly. and then you were not going to if you had your phone, then you were not going to it wouldn't even ring. My phone was on <laughs> silence. I it, once I walked in the gym, it was nothing outside that gym that I, I was interested in. Yeah, but you got to remember to us, so once you go to that gym, the phone's the last thing in your mind. You know yeah, yeah. But I think like I said, today, everybody, everybody's on these phones. Like, the phone's not important out there. It's just crazy. There's no respect for this game of boxing today. Yeah, but 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 at the same time, I think these guys are being spoiled. They didn't have to fight as hard as we fought to get the money that we I, made. Like I said, there's more social media now. That's why they're yeah. they be spoiled. Yeah. Yeah, we, we talk about a, that a lot. For example... I'm gonna drop a name. I don't care. This Ooh. this kid Ryan Garcia. Oh man, I was just thinking of him earlier. <laughs> man, yo, look. it's 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 disgusting. It's disgusting. <laughs> he's disgusting. Do you understand that? Um, he's celebrated because he's an uh, uh, Instagram sensation. Right. Not to say that he didn't pay some dudes, some dudes, you know. Um, but the hype around mm. him, all the hype around him, got him. A Gatorade deal, yeah, he, and all he's he done is stuff. Wow, he paid some dude, but he underpaid his dudes. Trust me, he ain't paid his full dudes. Man, Man right. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something. I was talking about him to myself in the car today, and just talking about boxing to myself, right? And I said the way he straight up, he would get knocked out. And his I stance, like, right? Yeah. Oh my God, that is disgust. That's why he got knocked on his ass. Right. But and then he, oh, and then he really think he can punch. No, hey, once you get in there with like a marvelous Marvin Hagler that can take your shots, 
Sam, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna walk through. You ain't gonna get away with those punches no, that you're throwing. No wide shots, you know, looking like they're slapping. Guys ain't smart though. Guys stay right in front of them, let them punch. I mean, right. Right. That, right. That's what makes it more and more. That must make it so hit hard because those guys, he's putting their stay right there. Don't try to get out of the way that they try to get hit by saying Garcia's good, but trust me, he's not the cream of the crop by far. Right, right. So, so my my in my opinion, I don't I don't really know uh, who's the best out there today. Um, I I do know like in the middleweight division, they. Kind of like protecting Canelo. I don't know. Because mm. the Charlo brothers are pretty Canelo good to me. Not, they, they, Them they guys, even if they fighters. don't have a whole lot of skills, they they motivated. They they train like, hard. Like, all I, like, I, like, I like the Charlo yeah. brothers. I think, I think with Canelo, I think they, they keep Canelo away from black fighters, I feel. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. We on to something. We on yeah, to something. You black know, black um, that's what it looked like. Because Canelo, and, and listen, listen, the guy went on a UK tour and tore their ass up. He didn't fight Andre. He didn't fight either Charlo. You know what I'm saying? And, he, went around, he went around everybody, trust me. I'm telling man, you. Man, Andre, he was supposed to fight Andre Ward. But yeah, but Canelo was his popularity. He goes around people. My thing is, he could have fought war, man. There's many guys that could have fought. That black fight that could afford that have been good for good fights, but I think to me, I think he does black fight as a person. That's what I feel about. It. I mean, I make it racist, but that's what it looks like to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you ain't you ain't wrong. I mean, we we speak on that habitually. Mm-hmm. And, you yeah, know, people, and people, 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 I remember this is about race. It's just it's just the truth of the matter. He don't like black fight. Black fight more rhythm, more ham. I think he don't like black fight. That's just the fact. Look, I think why didn't he fight in the Charlo? For the Charles, because he's he's in the driver's seat, but he don't want to play the black fighter. It's difficult, also, when you have an entire sanction and body that supports his nonsense. And when I say his nonsense, I mean, um, the guy popped dirty for Clint Bunero. Yeah, he popped yeah. dirty. And um, what did the WBC do? They gave him a slap on the wrist, right? And they told him, "All right, we're going to suspend you for a little while." And then when they came back, yeah, but yeah, but that they, was that they, was BS because. If that was anybody else. You get you get spending for a year, two years. That's well, of course, course. the difference the difference between us and him, he got a country following him. Yeah, you know? I mean that that's a fact too. That's a fact too. Yeah, that whole a, country behind him. That's what they looking yeah. at that 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 money. It, it, you know, yeah, exactly. that's it. I mean, I think money money more in the sport. We got to make money more in the sport. You know what I mean, I'm, imagine you guys popping dirty for a PED. And then whatever sanction and body, the IBF, remember the NABO, anybody, they just come up and they say, all right, look, from now on, it's not 0.02 that's liable. It's now 0.04. So now they just made it okay for 0.02 to be found in his bloodstream now. Oh, wow. wow. These are yeah. the things they did for Canelo. They also mm-hmm. created a status for him. He vacated the real WBC strap, accepted a franchise status, something that Suleiman made up. And pretty much just gave it away and didn't fight yeah, Charles for it. Wow. Just gave yeah, it away. Yeah, you know, kind of look at what was, was the friend, franchise champion. Ain't no sense in franchise champion. He's a champion. You're not. Franchise is nothing. So there's only one champion. So, you know, I'm, I'm from the I'm from an era where, look, I wanted to see the, 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 the fighters that I supported strongly. I wanted to leave. I wanted them to leave no doubt that they were the best. Mm-hmm. I don't see Marvin Hagler doing what these guys are doing. Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying I don't even see to an extent I don't even see Sugar Ray Leonard doing that, right? And and you let you let most pros tell it. They say Sugar Ray Leonard was the diva in the '80s. Yeah, but this this is this era of diva is to a new level. This is like yeah. crazy. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and it, this isn't a knock on Canelo because at at no point did I say he has a horrible skill set. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying his movements. Mm-hmm. And and the supporters that are not holding him accountable. This era of boxing, we have people uh, are celebrating the fact that their favorite fighter doesn't have to fight the tier competition. Yeah, I've never, never seen anything like this. Well, money make you change the situation. Man. That's what it comes down to. Money make yeah, you you're not lying. Situation. You're not lying. This is this is. I've never seen anything like this. It, it's it's nasty. 
And this is why the game is so messed up now. You have a you have too many champions, too many sanctioning bodies with the WBC. Every other day there's a belt being made up. By the way, how do you, how do y'all feel about the um <laughs> oh this is embarrassing to me it is the uh what was it? Anthony, what is it? The latest belt that Mauricio Sulaiman made? The, the, uh, belt? the Juneteenth belt? The Juneteenth yeah, know, freedom belt. No, you gotta understand. As far yeah. as boxing, it sucks. But for oh. the fighters, only the fighting wheel is good because with more belts, yeah. more money it makes for yourself as a fighter. But for, uh, for the boxing games, many belts. But yeah, freedom belt. It's, it's, it's hey, if they were to go backwards, if they were to go backwards and they, they did it like, okay, the NABF and the USB, USBC, mm. right? That's cool because that's stepping USBA. stone. So yeah, that, that those big times, that gives a young fighter motivation, you know, exactly. and gives them light at the end of the tunnel. But now when you're at the echelon of the game where the, the world championships are being created, new belts and new – I mean, it, it, it's, it's – so to, to be a middleweight, to be a super middleweight, to be a, a, a light heavyweight, they we, it should be a belt for everybody to chase. You know what I'm saying? A belt or two for mm. everybody to chase. And that means everybody's going to end up meeting up with each other. Right. So, you know, that just the, the knock on wood on that situation I, that I brought this up. I remember Bernard Hopkins always saying before me and him fought, that good fighters and the fighters in the in the boxing world should always rematch each other. And he's mm. about the older fighters, like how they fought so many times. Uh, my cousin fought Ray uh, Ray Robinson, and but, but they never filmed. They they filmed it, but they never it would, it would never rematch. Bernard Hopkins feels that same situation because there's a lot of people he did not rematch. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 I feel like I should have got a rematch with him at some point. Right. right. Yeah, but you know, you know, you got to remember, too, as far as boxing go, belts are good because it helps the fighter. Right. As far as the business go, belts suck because too many of them. But I think the more belts they make, the more money fighters can make. And the object of this game is to make money. So the belts help the fighters as far as making money go. But as far as the belts and the sports in general, there's too many belts, I think. Yeah. What they need to do, you need to cut it down to two belts. You make two belts. Right. Everybody got to fight everybody regardless. You got to fight everybody, got to fight everybody regardless. Right. And the right. two biggest stepping stone belts is the USBA and the ABF, which are good. Once once you get past those two belts, no more belts. Now you go to the world title. Right, All right. Exactly. I think that there should be tournaments. Every four years, yeah, every three or four years, it should be tournaments, and and um, regardless of who's in what, and just have a tournament to see who's the uh, undisputed person. Because right now, what these sanctioning bodies are doing, they're just playing chess and they're just collecting fees yeah, from, exactly. from these fighters, so and it's also, it's disgusting. Yeah, but also, I mean, it's just too much money in the sport now. The money, the money in the sport now is ridiculous. Boxing is being a poor man's sport now. It's not a poor man's sport or the money, the much too much money going around the sport right now. That's why you can't make moves no more because he may give you hundreds out, he's gonna give you so it's just so much money floating around. So that's a role of the sport too. It's too much money. Mm. Mm, man. The it's, money, it's, money it's, is good for the money is good for the fighters because that's what we in this business for. But as far as business, the money the money ruins it because you can't get fights made because one guy got bit one guy, then he's gonna hold on to he's gonna sell the title. So it's unfair for the business go, but for the fighters go, it's a great thing. Yeah. It's a buy it's a bias sport. Uh, I talked to the business. I talked to Antonio Tava and he told me they told him he was too old to fight whoever he was gonna fight recently. This is like a month ago. Too so, old. Yeah. yeah. Was it Frank Mir? Huh? What are you supposed to fight, Frank Mir? Was it Mir or uh, Cunningham? Cunningham was fighting him, but I think Targo was supposed to got him first. Well, oh, okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. they told him he was too old. Yeah, because he told you know he told, that's what he told me. They said they stopped they, they stopped the, the fight from going on because they say he was too old. So they saying that he hadn't fought within the la last. You got to fight within the last three years if you fit over fifty, like. 52, but that right, ain't right. fight. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean uh, you didn't have the mic. Remember, my 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 brings money to the sport. That's what so I'm you're saying. not gonna you, you're not gonna shut Mike down. Tarba, he's not bringing the money to the sport. I mean, right. man, Tarba don't have that name that really pops out to it unless you're a boxing fan. Right. So with him, that they're like, what's the point when you you can't bring them to the sport as we get pure well, boxing fans in? They yeah. they let they let um Michael Nunn fight. I know he's over fifty. When when yeah, he, Michael Nunn fought um. Pat Militich. Pat, Pat Militich, uh, about what? How many months ago was that? That was before COVID, right? Wasn't that before COVID? Michael yeah, Nunn. So, yeah. Michael Nunn fought, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we got it done before COVID. What? Yeah. He looked great. He looked great. And he won. <laughs> he looked great. It's on YouTube, man. Yeah. Oh, Michael no, no, Nunn no, no, fought. No, no, yeah. They fought in Iowa. Yeah, but they fought in the fight, but he just got out of prison, so he had to fight the big thing. So he's not talking about a guy on that one. He got a big name. So with him fighting uh, coming out of the jail, it makes sense. It makes money. I yeah. can't believe. I reached out to Oscar and, and B Hop for for exhibition. And let me guess, they ain't answered it, did they? <laughs> B Hop and them say they don't want it. Uh, Oscar and them, they ain't respond. Oscar told about coming back to fight Canelo. Can you believe that? Well, that's about money. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's but it. Exhibition, exhibitions is, is the thing in the boxing world. My thing is, exhibitions, you got to make more money for business than they do fights. Right. Yeah. I mean, man, if they want to do this, if they want to do this all the way, man, I mean, come on, man. They could, they could put together a classics league. If you guys feel you can do it and you can pass a physical, do it. Right. Now, that's what, that would be a great idea. That's the that whole thing about it. Idea. That's the whole thing about it, because you got a lot of them guys in worse condition than the older fighters. You know what I mean? Yeah, the guys, some guys that took a lot of punches and stuff like that, they still fighting. But, yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. Bro, I, I love Roy Jones, but how scared was you when he got in the ring with Mike Tyson? Yeah. I was like, bro, <laughs> come on, They man. put rules on that joint. You get wobbles, they're going <laughs> to stop it. Oh, yeah, but you remember, right now that fight day, you got another fight with him and Mike, you couldn't throw any knockout blows. So, yeah, but it's the same thing. You can't throw the knockout punches the same best for because in that fight with Michael, you can't throw the knockout punches. You can just touch him, but you can't knock a guy out. Right. Man, so, and, 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 when, when Roy was knocked unconscious, those were bad ones. Those were yeah, bad ones, and I was just scared. Fight. I'm going to give y'all my, my opinion of what I watched for, for some years. Even all the way back to uh uh you know Pacquiao on them. So at one point, when they were talking about Pacquiao being on the, being on steroids, I kind of like was looking at that because he was getting knocked down when he was smaller. Then yeah. he grew power when he grew up. So so then this is what I looked at. So we in the restaurant watching the Pacquiao Marquez. Uh, uh, that's who knocked him out, right? Marquez, Marquez, yeah, Marquez, yeah. So I'm telling people, I said. The, the first time somebody picked this, uh, uh, put Pacquiao in this situation, the way he jump in, he jumps in yeah. to throw his one two. He yes. don't one two from one stance. He one two. He jumps in. He jumps in. And he got knocked out. When he got knocked out, called it right, right at that that time. Then I then I started looking at Roy Jones. All them guys that they talked about being on steroids, and then they was off it. Got knocked out and Ooh. cheated the game. You know what's crazy? I thought about that too. I, uh, they talked about certain and once they stop, anybody started getting knocked out. I thought about that too. I just started the yeah. because, because now you're not high. as strong as you used to be. That's right. Yeah, I thought about yeah. that. And, but, but I look at it as like karma though. Yeah, but, yeah, but you can't see Pacquiao, but I don't know how people didn't know he was on steroids. But they, there's no way you should know from a little, he started his career at 108 pounds. There's no, right. way move back and listen, but there's no way there's no way at 108 you're moving up getting stronger. That's impossible. That, that's not that's psychological that you're moving up. You're not kind of naturally bigger guys and you just got that. That's, yeah. I mean, people, well, people, well, people, well, people, well, that's impossible. Not only that, during the whole Floyd Mayweather fiasco, I followed every fact surrounding right. that. Right. The bottom line was this. All Floyd wanted was Olympic style drug testing. If you're clean, that's just it. take it. That's but what was interesting yeah. was the amount of excuses that were made 
for Manny Pacquiao by way of his camp and the justification by his exactly. fan base. It yeah. was disgusting. He scared of needles. I said, how's he scared of needles? He has tattoos. Tattoo. Then they said, <laughs> then they said he has a condition where he's scared of the sight of his own blood. I said, when he batted people in the face, he cut everybody's face up. He sees blood in the ring. This is the, this is the fight ball. game. You can't be scared of your own blood. Not this is boxing. They said one no. time that they we in deep training that he they didn't want to take blood because they didn't want him to be weak. <laughs> mm -hmm. heard that one. Wow. You, know, you know, these are the things that we heard. And I said, I can't believe ESPN is not calling this guy out on this stuff. In fact, right. they, were they were on they were on Manny Pacquiao's side. Yeah, and I just said, you know, if if Floyd Mayweather had a quarter of any of those excuses, right, they would yeah. rip him a new behind. But yeah, they would rather team. tell him that he was afraid because he asked for OSTD. You I'm can't be serious. So if the uh, my whole thing is give it a shot, take the test, and see what happens when May after after he passed. Will May see if Mayweather well gonna fight him? Don't just walk away and not take the test. Well, time reveals all truth because when they finally got it done after five long years. Freddie Roach said in a quick interview, he said, yeah, you know, we'd have had the test done. We'd have took the fight, but we refused Olympic-style drug testing. I said, we've been saying this for five years. Why? What? In two seconds, he said I was correct. Right. In two seconds. I said, I can't believe all these years arguing with these guys online. But then these guys go down as the greatest of all time. Can you believe it? Yeah. You know, one guy, one guy said to me, he said, um, you know, we always do these fantasy matchups, right? And he says, yeah, you know, um, Manny Pacquiao beats everybody in the 80s. And I told this guy, I said, what? in no universe does Manny Pacquiao beat Aaron Pryor at 135 hey. or 140. In mm. no universe that happens. Hey, I don't he want dies. To you gotta, he dies. Okay? <laughs> the black bottle versus steroids. Aaron Pryor beats Manny Pacquiao 100% of the time. Before I go further, shout out to Gregory X. He says... Although all of those belts reflect the values of the current participation trophy generation, hashtag LDBC. Of course they do. That's why these belts really don't mean anything to me. Man, in no universe is Manny Pacquiao beat half the guys in there. I don't even think Manny Pacquiao beats Alexis or mm -mm. No, Get out of here, man. Stop okay. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he don't beat Aaron Pryor. He does not beat no Aaron Pry. I can't. That was a long. Though that's one of the conversations why I got off of Facebook. <laughs> I couldn't believe no, no, who I was no, talking no, no. to. He don't beat Aaron. He never beats Aaron Pry at all. Not even on his best day. Come on, man. These guys make me aggravated. I think I had you in a fantasy matchup before, Keith. Um, what was it? It was you. Oh, I'll tell you who it was. It was you versus Paul Williams. Oh, yeah. It was you versus Paul Williams. Yeah. yeah. That would have been fun, That's man. That's another one I called. I called it. At the, at the site of the fight, I called it. Because the guy that was training Paul was uh, – he he taught Paul that your offense is your defense. And I, I just always separated it. You know, I, you know, I disagree with that. So when Paul – if you would throw a punch, Paul would throw it, throw it at the same time. He punch with you. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then when he did it, he got caught. Listen, when you look at the way he got knocked out, you can see the guy loading the throw the, the, the punch, and oh, Paul yeah. goes to throw his punch and get clipped. I'm like, yeah, man. He got knocked out like a statue. Yeah. Yeah. That but was bad. They would never no. let him bomb or nothing, though. That, that, yeah. Really? It, he, 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 he got caught in an exchange that didn't need to happen. Right. And it, wow. it ended badly. But I always said, what if Paul Williams had the the uh, ring IQ of a Tommy Hearns? And what if Tommy Hearns had the chin of Paul Williams? Right. Right. That 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 would have been great, man. I think I think Tommy, Tommy had a nice chin. He just didn't know how to hold. He didn't know how to grab. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, exactly. I, I had the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm, I'm gonna lock you all the way up. <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna lock you. No, I'm gonna hold you. You ain't getting away. 
Yeah, but that's that, that, my problem. Though. When I got when I put, I was hurt. I never, I never held because for some reason when you made a good shot, I got hurt. My first response is, I gotta get you back. I mean, mm. so you know, my mm. mind. If I have a devil's fights where I got, I would, I would have grabbed. I'm sure I did my better, but I never, never passed. I never really got the hard to grab it. Yeah. Hey, I got some. Hey, um, Keith. Um, a lot of people like I, I was telling Junior earlier, he beat over 43 Mexican fighters. You never touched the canvas in your whole career. Nah. Nah, I never nah, I never been knocked down, never been stopped. Never. Nah. Wow, that's beautiful. I, I was blessed. I was thankful and blessed. I'm going to tell you something, though. It's, I'm a, and this is, I think this is, I never thought about it growing up, but people have said, uh, when you have a, 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 a mentality, like a street mentality, Embarrassed, um, like it, in the projects, it's embarrassed. It's it's like an embarrassment to get knocked down. So, <laughs> no matter what, I'm gonna hold your ass, and I'm not touching that cat. <laughs> if I can help, it. you know what I'm saying. So that's why I went all my whole career. I, I always trained very, very hard, man. I, I used to put that when I, we talked about the guys today. They would if they came in the gym. When we was training, they'd look at it totally different because everything was like jail. Like how yeah. my Hagler said he would put himself in jail. And because I, I uh he was one of my idols, him and Tommy Hearns was one of my idols growing up. I uh used to always put that in my mind about putting myself in jail when I got into a training camp. That was it. You know, yeah. and, uh, uh from that point on, I, you know, I just was blessed, I guess, man. You know, I fought some good fighters. And, and amateur, I had a, I had over 75 amateur fights. You know, never been damn. Yeah, I had 150 amateur fights. How many? 150. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was 150. I was 159. That's, that, that, that's something special. Salute to Mr. King Palmer and that super chat. Much love and appreciation. Keith, you did hit the canvas one time. But that was because B-Hop hit you low. <laughs> I remember that. I was like, ooh, man. I felt yeah. that, too. Yeah, he twisted. And the ref, the ref tried to tell you he didn't hit you that low. Nah, he, he I, twisted, I, the cup, I, twisted the cup. And, yeah. it, and it pinched me. You know? Yo. Yeah. So Yo, I heard it. I was he, there. I heard it. He, he didn't hit me uh, that low, but he turned. He hit the cup and turned it. Oh. Uh, right from the gut of the, uh, from the top of the leg. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, my so, God! But he, you know, Bernard was really good at what he did, you know, and they, they let him get away with it. They so, sure yeah. did, man. They, they always they, use they always use his 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 homie, that referee. What's his name? Uh, they, you know, they Tony, was Tony that Weeks. Weeks. Tony Weeks. No, nah, no, nah, the one, uh, the, the the guy was the uh, ref my fight. Was that Rich Steele that night? No, nah, it wasn't Rich Steele. I forget. What's his name, man? If you Google it, it'll come up. Huh? I'm gonna look for it right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna look for it right now. He always he always ref burn on fight. That sound like Tony Weeks for some reason, man. I don't that know really why. That sound like Tony Weeks. No, that's not like Tony Weeks. I don't think it's Weeks. Uh, Did he have a flat, flat top from flat top. Uh, Older guy. Yeah. Hey, bright think... kind of bright skin. Nah. Oh, that joint up, man. Hold like, on, I'm looking at it right now. I'll tell you. I'll tell you right now. That's Steve Smoger. Yeah, Smoger. Oh, Smoger. Smoger. That's yeah, Steve wow. Smoger. Yeah, they they was to go. They used to go out and eat, man. I found wow. out. Oh shoot. Yeah. I That's Steve out. Smoger. History, I history turned in uh, Smoger's lap. The night that Rockman got knocked out of the ring with uh, Oleg Maskev because somebody yeah. threw a chair and hit him in the back of the head. Oh, yeah. Oh. Go back wow. and look at the fight. When when Maskev knocked Rockman out of the ring and he went over the monitor, uh, Steve Smoger was sitting right there just a couple of feet over from the monitor and somebody threw a chair and it hit him right in the back of the head. Ooh. I think my man. Phone yeah, I had to. I apologize. I apologize for that. So I think I'm sorry. Gentlemen, I said I apologize for that. That's all right. <laughs> I threw that chair. 
<laughs> hey, you just you just incriminated yourself, man. <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, before we get out of here, um, Keith, tell us about your uh, book one more time. Okay, the Doc Path of a Champion. Uh, it's it's ta it's talking about my life story. Um, and it it's it's real Doc. It's real Doc. So Keith. So Keith, you married him? Huh? Did you marry him? The what? Did you marry him? Marry him. Come on, we can talk about, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Book that I don't know about. Oh shit! No, I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, it ain't that kind of doc. Kind of <laughs> yeah, no, nah. no, nah, but 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 it's doc, man. It's it's doc. You know, it's 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 you know, and uh, you know, even writing the book, it was really really tough to write. Right. Right? Yeah, and but well, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's it's gonna be some moments that y'all gonna see where uh, it's gonna it's gonna be laughable, but then it was a situation like I man. With the, I can't really talk about it, but it was like it was like war with the people in blue and all that. Mm. All right, good. When's it coming out? Now I'm talking about they used to they used to they used to uh, take my paper and all that, man. Mm. When was the book dropping? Uh huh. When's the book dropping? When it's coming out? I'm a real. I'm gonna send you one personally so you can. <laughs> so you, <laughs> but uh, hopefully oh, soon. I can't. I, I'm not gonna say a date. Okay. Right, I got say, but, but I would like to come back on. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you know. please, because we have a very um diverse audience. We okay. um, yeah, but this is guys. We we this we have guys. all we have all kinds of people from all walks don't of forget, life. Don't forget my show. <laughs> oh no doubt. <laughs> right, listen, and um, I said, don't don't forget my show. I'll tell you about my show, right? What show? Coffee cakes. Yeah, coffee yeah, cakes. the stripper. <laughs> the Adventures of Coffee Cakes. I'm going to send a lot up. of people in there look just like you. <laughs> yeah. Look just like you. That's what type of people coming in there. Because <laughs> you know they all in Georgia, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Right, right. Yo, salute. So I'm going to be your promoter. I'm going to get you your first gig in, in Georgia. How much percent? I got to get how much percent? 10%? Yeah, man. I appreciate man. this, man. I appreciate this. And we're going to come back on soon, all right? Yeah, all definitely, right, man. We're going we're gonna to come back on. And um, yeah, we want to definitely want to. I, I want to know more about that book. Because okay. uh, we got a lot of people from all walks of life. We got doctors, lawyers, law enforcement. Um, for, former allegedly former gang members or whatever. Yeah. Um, but um, we are pro the community, and um, if if you have a story, we want to share it because you never know who it can touch in a positive manner. Right. Just the day, know. the day that we come on, no law enforcement is allowed up on this on the next. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> hey, Keith, right. bring your reflex, man. You, put your, um, when you come back on again, bring your reflex, your, your shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, the shirt. <laughs> and, and Jim, and you need to get one in my reflex shirts, man. It really helped you, help you get in shape and use your dad more. <laughs> Oh really? Yeah, yeah. so really. <laughs> so I created a shirt with resist with a resistant band in the shirt. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, look, we gotta promote all of that stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. So we got a big audience, man. You know, yeah. we, we, we got a lot of people who train in here. Oh yeah. I created some flip flops. <laughs> you created some flip flops? We yeah, flip -flops. We, we gonna promote, <laughs> we gonna promote all we promote everything. <laughs> Hey, my phone's going to die, gentlemen. So I don't want to cut y'all off. It, it's going to die. But I appreciate everything, man. So we get back. I'm going to get back to y'all on that. And we'll yes, please, right man. Yes, right. please, man. Well, what's up with your social media? Keep with your social media. Huh? What social, social media you on? I'm on all of them. Keith Holmes World Channel, on Facebook uh, and IG. On, on IG. IG. I'm going to follow you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, give me on, I'm give me follow on, you right now. On, I'm going to block Junior, though. I'm a black <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, but you get a chance, hit me up. Give, give, give me all your information. Okay, I got you. Yeah, <laughs> don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, man. Don't forget well, he asked me what social media I'm on. He hit me in my inbox on Facebook. Man, burn my tape. Don't forget, burn my tape. Your tape? Coffee cakes. <laughs> Bye, man. Talk to y'all later. <laughs> y'all just followed you, Keith. True Titan. I just followed you, brother. Okay. All right. I'll be right, I hit you up, Keith. Okay. I'm hit yes, you up. All right, Junior, hit you up. Yeah, all right, Junior. I'm going to let you give me up one time, and then you're going to have to pay from that point on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to charge you. I got you. All right, I'll see y'all. I got you. All right. Peace, peace. All right, guys. I'm going to get out of here myself. All right, my brother. Yo, Junior, right, we man. definitely gonna have you back, man. Call the fight or something. We definitely gonna have you back. That was great being. I really, I really enjoyed myself. It's great being on with you guys. No doubt, fam. I'll talk to you soon. I right, no doubt, baby. Yes, sir. Yo, that was fun. I know Batman had something else to do, and Monty was dealing with family. He was in the middle of something, man. We'll get Monty mm -hmm. back on, man. Yeah, Salute to on. Kenneth Johnson in that super chat. Myself and appreciation, man. Man, that was fun, man. That was fun, yeah, man. Junior Keith is a clown, ain't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Clown, right? he is. <laughs> Coffee case. Yeah, he is, man. I'm legend Only boxer good. says, "Where can we buy the book's not out yet?" Um, but as soon as it's out, we're gonna have him back on, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna talk about it in depth, man. But um, I, I didn't know he was writing a book, man. But we um, we definitely gonna do that, man. Um, yeah, we uh, I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up right now because I know the uh. I know Black's about to come on in a second. Stormy, let everyone know where they can find you. Uh, everybody can find me right, right here on YouTube. Stormy B-Man is the channel. I'm back. That's back. right. Since they back, I'm back putting my putting my uh, content out. I got videos. I got live streams. I got everything going on, man. And I got a little bit of merchandise over there, too. So go on down there in that description box. Click on that merchandise link. And get you something like this here, the Stormy B Man hoodie or a t shirt or a baseball cap, whatever, man. we doing it. No diggity doubt. My brother Trick Nolte in the building. Let them know how they can find you. Hey, man, y'all can reach, reach me on um, um, Instagram at Trick underscore Nolte. I'm on Facebook as Anthony Carter. That's my government name. So everybody in the chat, thank y'all for coming. Drew, thank you for having me on. Storm, it's always good to be on with you, man. And this is a great show, man. We had some good minds of boxing on there, man. And uh, it was some. We heard some. We heard some stuff today, man. That's why I like getting these guys on there. Yeah. That and you know what I want to do? I'm definitely. You know what? I'm gonna try and get a hold of Lou DeBella because he got some explaining to do. Yeah, don't he? Yeah, and I know somebody that lives near me that knows him personally. That knows mm. him personally. I will, I, dude. I'm gonna get him on the show. If there's two people I want on my show. Definitely, it's it's Ronnie Coleman and uh, Lou DeBella. Because mm. I, I have questions. Y'all know how I do. Um, mm. and I normally I don't go live on um like uh Fridays and Saturdays. You know what I'll do on Fridays? I don't know when I'm gonna do it though. That'll be my gym day, and I, I might go live in the gym, and we'll just discuss health and wellness live from the gym. That's what I'll do. Yeah, but um, we I'm gonna try and get a hold of uh of Lou DeBella, cause he got some explaining to do. You know what I mean? Great show, fellas. Y'all don't be shy. Uh, Trick Nolte's cash app been scrolling on the bottom of the screen the whole show. You know what I'm saying? When y'all see um guests in here like that, this brother is uh. In the trenches getting it done, man. And I love having these brothers on here. I ain't seen Keith Holman. Uh, Keith Holman. Keith, I can't even talk right now. I haven't seen Keith since that night he lost to B-Hop. You know, and um, I'm glad he's well. I can't wait to, hit, to, to read that book. We're going to have him back. We're definitely going to have Junior back because he was out here clowning. I know he had a sense of humor like that, man. Yeah, he does. But it's all love here. I'll be back tomorrow. Stormy will be back tomorrow. Trick Note will be back in the building sooner than later. Drew Titan Bronx on deck. Shout out to the mighty LDBC. We going. Move!